Hey guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. It's Kevin here, and uh, we're gonna wrap up the week in uh, fragrance. If you're new here, in this video, we just kind of wrap up the past week of my scent of the days for the past week. I'm actually filming this on Monday, so we're just gonna kind of look back at yesterday, work our way back all the way to Monday of last week. And it's really just kind of a way to pass the time here on this channel and um, talk to you guys and keep in touch with everyone. All the while talking about things we love and things that we're passionate about. So let's start off with Sunday Sin of the Day. It's this one right here and I normally kind of pull it out uh, this time of year. That's one thing you're gonna notice in this video that you can kind of see the switch here now from winter fragrances headed into early spring fragrances. And some of these even are just full on spring fragrances for me. So you can probably notice I'm getting a little bit trigger happy with some of this spring stuff. I mean, I don't know why. Sometimes I just prefer having a longer winter. Uh, but this year I just would really like to see spring get here. Would really just like to see nice weather. I'm one of those people I've noticed, especially as I get older, and I'm sure there's a lot of us out there, that I really feel it whenever I'm without the sun for a while, um, especially during the colder parts of the year. I don't know how you guys do it up north. When I'm without the sun for a while, my body really starts to feel it. I'm sure it probably has to do with just getting older. And I'm not really one of those people that hates the summer months. Don't get me wrong, I hate the real high heat and the constant high heat, but as far as the health of my body, the health of my mind, I definitely need that sunlight, and I feel like I need it more and more as I get older. So you'll kind of notice that in this weekly wrap-up. I'm trying to transition a little bit to spring fragrances, and on Sunday, my scent of the day was this one right here from Dior. It is the original 2011 version of Dior Homme, which we now know is discontinued, and really this was the fragrance that spearheaded today's trend of that waxy makeup -y iris, Dior Homme. It's one that doesn't really perform all that well, I still really enjoy it though. It's that it's that iris. It's kind of got a little bit of a powdery feel to it. It's got that cacao too. So a little hint of some chocolate. It's not what you would expect if I were to call a fragrance or mention that a fragrance had the note of chocolate in it. The cacao note is probably a little bit more powdery. It just has a little bit more of a fancy feel, a little bit more fancy chocolate note to it. Um, but yeah, and that muskiness in the original Dior Homme, that iris, that powdery iris, that makeup-y iris, and then the cacao. It's one of those that will always be a fragrance that goes down in history, really, probably, as starting one of the biggest trends in perfumery, and that is, you know, how we use the note of iris, and that is the original 2011 Dior Ohm. That was Sunday Scent of the Day. Not a huge performer or anything like that, but I still really just love spraying that fragrance on. I don't even at this point care how it performs. Just smelling that fragrance, and normally it's right around this time of year, early spring. Just smelling it is a little bit of an energy boost. And then on Saturday, it was this one right here from Zaharoff. And it's one of the forgotten fragrances from Zaharoff. It's from the Zed creators, um, the YouTubers that kind of combined with Zaharoff and teamed up to create their own individual fragrances. This one is, of course, Brass and Soul from the YouTuber Justin Copeland. I'm really kicking myself for only having procured one bottle of this. This is a two-ounce bottle of this stuff, and look how much I've used over the years. I'd immediately go online to find a backup bottle for this stuff, but I know I'm gonna end up having to probably pay kidney prices for it on eBay or something like that. There's something about this one that kind of has a late 90s feel, and for somebody who kind of grew up and started in this hobby, during the late 90s, that really rings true for me. I mean, there's just a lot of freshness in this fragrance. Of course, it has that gin, a very noticeable kind of alcoholic gin feel to the fragrance. 
Gives it a nice crisp kind of cool feeling to the fragrance as well. Um, there's also cypress, lavender, um, musk, and I think geranium as well. So everything about the fragrance is very fresh. This was my absolute favorite fragrance from the Zed Creators that they've made so far. Of course, he also came out with Second Soul, which was the follow-up to this fragrance right here, which I preferred Brass and Soul. I mean, this is a fragrance that just really fits my style. And I would probably even consider this one of my top 10 spring fragrances as well. Um, Brass and Soul. So you can kind of see just so far with the first two fragrances that I've talked about here, the 2011 Dior Ohm and then Brass and Soul. I'm not playing around with my spring fragrances right now. I mean, I'm really ready to start pulling out the big boys. Um, and the next one uh, on Friday is this one that I just recently talked about in my top rose fragrances video. So as you can see, another heavy hitter here. It's this one right here from YSL, and that is Loam Ultime. Of course, this fragrance is discontinued. Um, kind of that whole Loam line of fragrances had, I would say, average performance to them. But this one right here, I feel like was the outlier. I would consider this above average. I mean, it performs very well on me. I'm actually testing it out today because of the scent of the day that I have on today is actually Loam, the original Loam from YSL. So I've got this one on my other hand today. And just like I talked about in my top rose video, um, this one is all about the spices. Um, the woodsy feel, the cedar, and of course that rose. And it's one that performs pretty well on my skin. And also, like I mentioned in that video, I don't know why I don't wear this more often. I don't know if it's the fact that it's discontinued and it's kind of just one of those byproducts of a fragrance being discontinued and I just subconsciously don't want to reach for it as much. But I've got plenty left. I mean, that's going to last me forever. But yeah, that was Friday's. That is Loam Ultime uh, from YSL. And then on Thursday, we went with this one again. And I've already talked about this one a couple of times, it feels like, for a scent of the day for me here. With this nice weather kind of starting to heat up a little bit. Um, early February, I mean, this isn't unusual for us to see kind of early signs of spring in February, even though it is probably one of our colder months. It will throw a couple of bones to us occasionally every now and then. So yeah, musk therapy um, from Initio. This is a fragrance that in my last video or my last weekly wrap up, I had one of my subscribers mention to me on Fragrantica the notes of this fragrance and the voted sex for this fragrance. So you can either vote female or male or even unisex on stuff or even just kind of halfway between each. And this one has a surprising amount of votes for female. And I would have never thought that wearing this one. To me, it smells perfectly unisex, if not leaning masculine. So it's funny to see so many people consider this, number one, a floral fragrance, even though there are floral notes in this, I don't really consider it overly floral. Of course, it does have the note of black currant in it. Black currant can do that with fragrances, I feel like. Cassis, black currant it can kind of be the tipping point sometimes as a note to where a fragrance is right down the middle. It can kind of tip it a little bit feminine. And I think that's probably what's doing it for a lot of people. I mean, you do have Magnolia in this. And of course, you've got the black currant as well. And when they told me that, I mean, I immediately went to Fragrantica to kind of see what the talk was about this one. And surprisingly enough, yeah, there are a lot of people that find this one to lean feminine. For me, it's right down the middle. And it's probably... Uh, my absolute favorite musk fragrance as far as musk as a dominant note. Yeah, that is Thursday's scent of the day. That is from Initio. That's musk therapy. And then after that one, kind of kept with that spring theme, just itching to get into my spring fragrances. It's from Mind Games. And this one is Queening um, on Wednesday. And Queening was, of course, my number one 2023 release. It was a fragrance for me that really just kind of threw me for loops. I mean, I smelled this and immediately I was head over heels. 
Um, it's one though that several different notes can kind of play tricks with me each time I'm smelling it, each time I wear it. Sometimes I'll get something sweet and kind of candied like um, the next time, like the last time I wore it, can kind of get a little bit of a leathery feel to it. Definitely something leathery here in this. I'm thinking it might be the note of saffron, which would also probably indicate why I'm kind of getting a little bit of a sugary sweet feel to it as well. Almost smells like a violet leaf to some degree as well, because there is a little bit of a greenness. There is a little bit of a wateriness, and there is also something here that smells of leather, but not necessarily a really heavy leather. I mean, the fragrance overall is just very sweet. It does have apple in the scent notes as well. Saffron, which I also mentioned, a clean cotton accord too. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things going on here. A lot of different directions this one can kind of take. And honestly, I think the base notes are playing a very underrated role here. Um, you've got whipped vanilla bean, you've got a fluffy musk, and you've also got coconut. I just think the fragrance overall comes across as a little bit foody sweet, or no, I'll say sugary sweet. There's definitely something in this that kind of makes it lean towards that style of fragrance, but it also has a nice masculine leather feel too. I mentioned violet leaf, but violet leaf is not an official note for this one, but there's almost a little bit of a gasoline-like leathery feel to this as well. Queening, a lot of things going on with this one. Um, perfectly unisex. I would even say this one probably leans a little bit masculine, but if you had to hold me to it, I'd probably say just right down the middle unisex. But yeah, that's Mind Games, Queening, and that was my number one new fragrance for 2023. And it was my first full wearing of this fragrance for 2024. And that one will be a regular go-to spring fragrance for me this year. And then on Tuesday, a fragrance for me that you know when you see me pull this one out, spring weather is right around the corner and we've just had a gorgeous day because I won't really wear this one otherwise. And it's from Creed and it's original vetiver, probably one of the most easygoing, um, clean fragrances, clean kind of citrusy, neroli fragrance feel, vetiver. Of course, the vetiver here is very... Um, almost soapy to a degree, not really earthy like we're used to with a lot of vetiver fragrances. This one just kind of has like a very clean, straight out of the shower feel to it. Of course, that Neroli plays a huge part. I think bergamot, maybe even orange is listed as well, but it's a very soapy, just kind of clean, fresh feeling fragrance, a little bit of a grassiness to it as well. Um, original vetiver from Creed. Love the way that one smells on my clothes when I pick them up the next day. Beautiful. Love to see this one out in a weekly wrap-up video. That just means spring weather is right here, right around the corner at least. Um, a classic from Creed. And then on Monday, we started the week with this one right here from Zaharoff. Of course, I talked about it in my initial first impressions video. And it is Signature Black Rose Halfetti. And this is a fragrance for me that I could see this one becoming a huge love for me as far as rose fragrances go at some point. Yeah, I could see this one being in a top rose list for me down the road. Um, now, I have not spent a lot of time with this one really at all right now. And so there is going to be a little bit of an adjustment period for it, a little bit of a, you know, kind of get to know each other. But it's a really nice kind of musky rose fragrance has some heavier, darker notes, has a real strong pepperiness to it as well. The rose is front and center. And everything about my first impressions with this fragrance was very positive. Um, that's Monday's uh, scent of the day. That is a wrap-up for another week in fragrance. You can kind of see the tide turning a little bit from winter headed into spring. And I've mentioned on this channel, you know, we have a February normally. It's pretty rough. It's usually pretty cold in February. I mean, it's right up there with one of the coldest months of the year for us. So I'm not going to get too excited with all of my spring fragrances, but this past week was just really nice and probably not something I should get real used 
to because it's not going to always be this nice for probably the next few weeks or so. But hey, any chance I can get to pull some of these really nice, easygoing spring fragrances out, I'll take it. So there you guys have it. That's another weekly wrap up. I appreciate you watching. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.